Boom shakalaka, this is bad for Bitcoin death cross and head and shoulders where Bitcoin price is likely to go. Stay tuned. What's up everyone, Randall here from Crypto Love. Today's video, we're talking about a double whammy for Bitcoin. Not only a death cross, but also the head and shoulders has been confirmed here, which based on this would bring the price down to negative $5,000. Today's video, we're going to be talking about exactly where Bitcoin price is likely to go and why what's happening with Bitcoin right now is a little bit confounding, confusing, whatever word you want to say for it. Before we do, guys, make sure to like, subscribe, click the notification bell. Also, come join us over on Twitter at the Crypto Love, where every week we give away one of these sweet shirts. Now, Bitcoin price is plummeting below $30,000 at the moment, mostly due to this China news, China FUD. I don't know about you guys. I don't know how long you've been in cryptocurrency personally, but this is like the 10,000th time that China has banned Bitcoin. It's getting somewhat old here, but now they're, China, they're banning mining, they're banning using crypto and banks. It's a complete China ban. It's absolutely terrible. And because of that, Bitcoin price is plummeting past support. It completed this head and shoulders. And with this death cross, both of these things are saying, hey, Bitcoin price could continue to plummet. As a matter of fact, Bitcoin could do something it has never done before. So previous cycles, Bitcoin has a halving, soars up pre past previous all-time high, has a top, comes back down to somewhere on this logarithmic regression, but not coming back down to the previous all-time high. Again, we have a halving, price soars past previous all-time high, comes down to the logarithmic regression band, but not the previous all-time high. Never even hits the 61.8 fib. I'm not sure if you can see it here in the purple. However, this time, Bitcoin only went up to a mere $65,000. Okay, not great, like three and a quarter times bigger than the past all-time high. And then if it actually comes down to that 61.8, that would be the previous all-time high, the first time that Bitcoin has ever done it. As a matter of fact, even if Bitcoin pulls back to this logarithmic regression band, it could pull back to previous all-time highs, something that Bitcoin has never, ever, ever done in its entire history. We even have large traders like Robert Kiyosaki saying the biggest bubble in world history is getting bigger, biggest crash is world history is coming, buying more gold and silver, waiting for Bitcoin to drop to $24,000. Crash is best time to get rich, take care. He actually thinks that Bitcoin will come down to right somewhere around the 50 fib, a little bit below there. He thinks $24,000. Now what's confusing about this? I'll tell you what's confusing about this. Take a look at this chart here, okay? The price was soaring, and we'll zoom out even a little bit more so you can see a little bit more. Now the price was soaring, definitely parabolic rise up until about middle of April. And then ever since then, the price has been dropping off. Now this is funny, interesting, because they're still continuing to print money left and right. Modern monetary theory, governments don't need to have any income in terms of what they can do. They can just print and print and print money. And if we take a look at some other things, the average housing price in the United States going up parabolically, it's gone up insanely over the past year. Not only that, we have the stock market parabolically since March. Look at this, the price straight up. Okay, now it is in a little bit of an ascending wedge, so potentially it could break downwards if we have a collapse. But again, housing, and stocks are going up parabolically, but for some reason, crypto is crashing, particularly Bitcoin. There's a fixed amount. You see, real estate is good because there is a fixed amount of real estate, but they can still build high rises and stuff like that. Bitcoin, there's only ever 21 million. Stocks, there's an ever increasing supply of stocks out there. So I don't understand. It doesn't make sense to me how both of these things continue to go up and Bitcoin is crashing. But let's take a look at the chart for what it is right now. We have some craziness going on with Bitcoin. Based on the chart, based on TEA, we could see the price going down significantly. We'll be talking shortly about where the price is likely to go. Now, on Twitter, Ralph Paul, he says, while we're enjoying the volatility, and he says, actually, I'm pretty impressed how people are taking it as par for the course and aren't overly freaked out. Here's what we're actually investing in, the fastest rate of adoption of any technology in all history. Volatility is 
noise, very important right there. Volatility is noise, so don't pay attention to it. But we are having adoption of cryptocurrency faster than the adoption of the internet. And if we take a look at where we are right now, just for a little bit of perspective in case you think the sky is falling, we're about 1997 when it comes to the internet. I can't even remember what that was like. I think that was like when you had to wait five minutes on a dial-up modem to download a naked picture of a girl. I think that's pretty much where it is right now. So, potentially, we have a billion crypto users in about 2024. Potentially 3.7 billion towards 2030. So, we have a lot coming up on that. Now, plan B, I love this. He says, what a difference three months make. 41% now thinks Bitcoin will stay below $100,000 in 2021 versus 16% in March when Bitcoin was $55,000. So, as we can see back here on the right, back in March, most people thought that Bitcoin was going to be over $100,000 in December. And a lot thought it was going to be over $288,000. Now, if we fast forward to right now, most people think it's going to stay below one hundred, dollars and then maybe one hundred. dollars but really, everyone who was 288 and 100,000 or over shifted down a notch. And I think that's good because I think that means that a lot of this total FOMO in is getting a bit regulated, which is the shakeout that this market has needed. Now, where especially are we going? So this is the same chart that we saw over here, just with a couple more bars on it for you. So you can see where we are. So, some important things. We have the death cross right here. We had this trend that we had been riding in since the middle of May, for a little over a month, just broke below that trend line. Now, that it broke below that trend line, and also broke below this 38.2 fib from the $10,000 all the way up to $64,000, where could it likely go? Well, as a bare minimum, there's this dotted line right here. From the bottom of March, it tapped off of there in about October. That would be the bull cycle bottom. If it breaks below there, we're definitely not in a bull cycle anymore, at least according to me. Other people may think differently. But we're coming up right now on this purple line, the 400-day moving average. This is about $27,500. Bitcoin could potentially bounce off of there. Certainly could. But if it breaks through there, the next line would be the 23.6 fib right at around $23,000, which is a thousand below what Kiyosaki was looking at. Now, he's a smart investor, and smart investors generally aren't greedy. So he could potentially be looking at that 23.6, thinking the price could go down there, and he's just going to be a little bit less greedy. And if it breaks through there, we could potentially see the price down to around $20,000 right now. It's about $19,500, which is where that bottom bull run line is at right now, in my opinion. So those are three potential levels, 27 and a half, 23, and about 20 that we should definitely keep our eyes peeled for. Now, am I scared? Absolutely not. Have I sold Bitcoin? Yes, I sold some to pay off some debt around 45,000 here. And yes, I sold them some around 45,000 here just to diversify a little bit. But I still hold the vast majority, 80% of all Bitcoin that I have. And the reason that I'm not selling is because of what's coming up here. So episode, not episode, exhibit A, Willy Woo. He, he goes on, on Twitter right here saying the Rick Astley is back. Coins are moving back to the hodlers who never desert Bitcoin. People who understand limited supply. We see from green going back to red. Basically, hodlers aren't selling. Now, we can see the massive coins dumped out to speculative hands are being reaccumulated by strong hands in a pattern or similar to the COVID recovery. So this is the dumping of coins happened back in COVID and then boom, boom, boom goes back to hodlers. Same thing just happened here. A bunch of speculative people, people who probably bought into Dogecoin, went all in and now they're all out again at a loss, most likely. Well, they sold it and it went back to hodlers. So likely the price is going to go up eventually. Now, who's selling? Well, it's not whales, it's not sharks, it's not dolphins, it's not big hodlers. It's not octopuses or fishies, it's not crabs. They're stacking as hard as they can. Shrimps, definitely not. It's basically just the noobs. They've taken a look at it, and basically people who were in Bitcoin for a very limited amount of time are the people who sold the most. 
So, are we in a bear market? No, definitely not. Because Plan B is still saying that even though Bitcoin is below $34,000 triggered by Elon Energy FUD and China's mounting crackdown, there's more fundal re fundamental reason that we'll see fundamental weaknesses in June and possibly July. Summers just generally aren't good for Bitcoin. His worst case scenario for Bitcoin right now is August 47,000, September 43,000, October 63,000, November 98,000, and by the end of the year, December 135,000. Dollars Now, it's still looking great. And you guys are saying, but what about China? I mean, if China cracks down, there goes all of Bitcoin. I just want to say Exhibit B. Let's take a look at all of the companies banned in China. See if you know any of these companies. We have Google, YouTube. I know you all know XHamster. Facebook, Wikipedia, Reddit, Microsoft, Netflix, Zoom, Blogspot, Yahoo, pretty Instagram. They ban everything. And guess what? As far as I know, Google's still doing pretty good. YouTube's still doing pretty good. Facebook's still doing pretty good. Instagram's still doing pretty good. So this China ban, it's all FUD. The manipulation of the markets so that the smart money can take hold of the scarcest asset the world has ever seen. The alpha asset. You want to make sure you hold your Bitcoin. So thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy it, make sure to like, subscribe, click the notification bell. I will catch you in my next video. Love you. Peace.